Hello and welcome back to Fringes of Reality, the show where we talk about your encounters with high strangeness. Uh, I am your host, Ashley Hilt, and joining me this week as co-host is Zool. Zool, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? Fantastic. It's been a while since I've talked to you. I'm I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Um, It's, yeah, it's been a minute. I know you're, you're uh, making movies now, so you're way cooler than us. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this month, uh, for it got busy. I wasn't expecting it to be a busy month, but it, uh, it loaded up really fast. I, I got a film deal and I'm working on that and it's been really fun. Well, well, congratulations. I'm that's, I think that's great. Um, so, you know, for this week's episode, um, we have uh, Susie here. Um, Susie, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Hello. I'm su- I'm excited to hear your story. I'm just excited. I always say that. I'm super excited. Well, it's because I am. Um, I love this stuff, you know. Um, so you, you know, you volunteered. You wanted to come on. Um, you wanted to share your experiences with the strange. I have no clue where this is going to go. So... <laughs> <laughs> That makes me um, really excited. Um, So do you have just one experience or are you bringing multiple experiences uh, to share? So I have one experience that turned into a couple years worth of problems for me. Oh, okay. All righty. Interesting. Well, let's go ahead and start. um, Let's go to the the very beginning here. Where did this start for you? So this started, it was like summer of 2020. Um, I had this. Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) We're setting the stage already, right? All right. So things that happened in 2020. (laughs) On top of everything else, I also had this problem starting. Right. (laughs) So I started having this reoccurring dream. And in the dream, I am in my hometown which is already terrifying, you know, being back in your teeny tiny, small minded hometown. So immediately bad scene. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. (laughs) And it's this one particular house, which was an actual house in my hometown. I didn't know the people that lived there or anything, but it was just kind of like scenery growing up. I remember seeing the house. Um, And in the dream, there is this one older woman and these two younger guys and I'm helping them on their farm and everything is going good everyone's nice and it's a good day until I go to leave and I go to get in my car and the transmission is gone which is bizarre I don't know anything about cars I don't know how I knew my transmission was gone (laughs) how it was gone well, dream but, logic. <laughs> yeah. You just In the knew. dream, transmission was gone. <laughs> so I go to tell the woman, like, my transmission's gone. I, I need help. And she immediately changes. And she starts screaming at me that I can't leave, that I have to stay. And I go to run. And the two guys grab me. Okay. And that's where the dream ends. Okay. So this dream started happening like once or twice a week. Okay. And after the first few times, I called my mother and said, you know, I'm having this dream. And I described the house to her. And she's like, oh, that's the house your grandmother grew up in. Which Interesting. You didn't I had know. no idea at the time. And I described the woman in my dream and she says, you know what? That sounds like your great grandmother. Okay. All right. Um, and I had never known her or my grandmother's side of the family very much. Um, but from what my mother said, she was not a nice woman. Okay. So that checks out her, the behavior in the dream. Yes. Um, My mother sent me a picture that she had of my great grandmother. It was the woman in my dream. Oh, wow. 
very cool. Well, okay, Just, so let's. And you've never met her. Did no, you, she died before I was born. Did you hear stories of her growing up or see pictures of her around the house or like? Not that I can recall. My grandmother, I grew up, she babysat me when I was little. I was around my grandmother all the time, but my grandmother never talked about her family. I only knew about my grandfather's family. Okay. And so we this kind was- of pieced together some reasons why that might be. I don't think she had a great relationship with her mother either. Gotcha. So the house, you know, you said that in your dream, you're at this house. You're, you're, you've you're seen the house before around town. But you mentioned working on a farm. Was there a farm at the house in real life? Not when I was alive, but there used to be. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned... Um, two male characters in your dream you know okay so we got the lady who is your grandmother um she's apparently a mechanic um (laughs) (laughs) or a mechanic minion maybe right um what about the two gentlemen um any i mean do do you know who they might be we don't know at all um i farm hands well since this dream happened i have met the neighbor the current day neighbor who inherited his house from his father and then it was his grandfather's before them so his grandfather so he might know more of the history yeah and he said so apparently my great grandfather owned a still during prohibition oh okay Ooh, spicy yeah (laughs) and there was stories of like neighbors being brought home in wheelbarrows and stuff like that sure um, but he did mention they had a farmhand from Germany for a while that he knew about. Um, okay. I they I don't recall either of them being German though, so that might be a dead end. But yeah, who the <laughs> other two guys are kind of. Did she really have sons? Mystery. Um, no, just two daughters. No two sons. Daughters. Okay. That's interesting. I guess I don't see that it could be unheard of for them to be farmhands, right? Um, you know, you're talking your great, great grandmother. So you're talking, well, you said, um, you know, he had a still there. So what, early 1900s to 1930s? Is that what you're? Yeah, time my frame grandmother was born in 1917. Okay. So okay. just for reference, she was probably born late 1800s somewhere. How old do you think the the woman in the dream was? Was she just just kind of taking a guess of, of a decade? So old timey people kind of look older. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, fact, actually, she was it's very true. like matronly. I would say in her sixties. So after grandma was born, and the yeah. men were they younger or? Yeah, they were in the dream? probably in their thirties. And how old are you in the dream? That's a good question. I was definitely not a child in the dream. I was driving, but okay. I was in my old car, which would have been like mm. 10 years ago. Okay. Well, that's, that is interesting. But as far as you know, you're just you at whatever yeah. time period in your life. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. So you're having this dream. You find out, oh, hey, it's great grandma and she's terrible. Um, what, what, what rabbit hole did this lead you down? I mean, it sounds like you've gone as far as, you know, contacting the neighbor. Um, yeah. So I want to hear that part. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, um, tried to ignore it for a while thinking it would like go away. It did not. Um, so I asked around if any of my friends knew any mediums or anything sure. like that. Um, the first person I talked to, I didn't want to give them too much information to have them go off of. So I just, you know, said, I have this dream about my great grandma. Are you getting anything? And like one of the first things they said was, oh, she's not angry. I was like, you're wrong. No, (laughs) she's always angry. You're so wrong. That was her nature. She was always angry. (laughs) My grandma, she's that way. She's dead now, but I'm sure she's still angry (laughs) about it. (laughs) So I was like immediately, I was like, I do not trust this person. We're not going with them. Um, and then I talked to a second person 
And that second person immediately was like, oh, do you crochet? Mm. And I'm looking around like, do I have anything on me? Right. And I didn't. Um, and that person basically told me that the feeling she got was that my great grandmother was upset because we are different religions and I'm not going down the path that she wants her family to go down, which checks out. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Um, So she's trying to, so maybe the dream, the interpretation of the dream and, and the, you can't leave as maybe more, you can't trying, leave this religion right you can't leave yeah. this lifestyle um right. or is i mean do you, is that what your is that what your conclusion is at this you know at this point yeah i feel like she wants me to like be pulled back into the line that she wanted her family to go in and she wants me to be stuck in that path is she still bothering you is she still are you still having these dreams So that second medium that I talked to, she gave me some suggestions. Okay. Um, One of them was like to get holy water and like try and talking to her. Um, My mother also sent me my great grandmother's Bible. Oh, okay. So I tried like putting that on the nightstand. I tried. I didn't try to trick her into believing that. (laughs) Look, Grandma, I've got your Bible. It's good. See? <laughs> I, I didn't do the holy water thing because I didn't even want to go to a church to get the holy water. So right. I didn't do that. Um, and then one day I'm in my bedroom and I have a TV on top of my dresser. And like right after I walked by, the TV fell off the dresser. Oh. Okay. And I'm looking like my cats are accounted for. And neither right. of them did it. And I also have like this runner on the dresser and that didn't move. Hmm. And I think that might have been like an escalation in things. Mm -hmm. Like she's getting mad that I'm not paying attention and falling in line after she's threatening me and all that. She's trying to take transmission out of your old car. She <laughs> yeah. threw a and TV I'm, at like, you. I, at this point, I'm scared to go back to my hometown to visit because I'm scared I'll get stuck there. Like my transmission will go or something. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It, yeah, you could. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't blame you. Yeah. You know. So, oh. like, that, to me, it wasn't scary. I got mad. Sure. Like, what is your problem? Right. This is not Who your are you to tell me <laughs> that... You're right and I'm wrong. Like, obviously, whatever idea you had of the afterlife, I don't know. But you're still here bothering me. So it can't be that great. Right. Right. (laughs) Don't you have anything better to do? Like, hang out with angels and play harps or something? Right. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Um, So just for clarity's sake, let's go ahead. Let's let's name them, right? Um, What religion was great grandma? What did she follow? And and what, what do you follow? So she was a, uh, at the time it was called Congregationalist. Okay. I think now, um, what would it be called now? I, I um, have no idea. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to assume some type of Christianity. Um, yes. You know, I don't know what exactly. I know there's a lot of subdivisions and I have no idea. A congregating kind. You're right. So they had been, they're basically my, they were a Mayflower family. They were Puritans. Oh boy. And, but Puritan isn't actually what they called themselves. They called themselves Congregationalists. Didn't the Puritan bloodline run out because they didn't believe in procreation? And that was like, I don't know about the problem. I know what what happened with the Shakers. The Shakers, that's who it was. It wasn't the Puritans. (laughs) (laughs) That's super embarrassing. (laughs) That was just poorly thought through. And it's like, you know, now everybody knows that you didn't get laid. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone knows. Um, It just doesn't seem like a very good plan for like long term stability of any religious sect. Hey, part of our religion is we don't have sex, so there is no babies, so there's nobody to carry it on. 
Right. This Let's get it. this group of people together that it's don't. It's just have- us guys, and then there's we die, people. and everything I, ends. There's people Lack that are like foresight. sex repulsed, you know, and that's fine. Like, there's people that that are asexual or whatever. They they're not interested in it. But like, this was a bad move. Like, they took all those people and put them together, and was like, "Great, we're gonna prosper." And it's like you can't prosper though. Like, you literally cannot. There's no <laughs> prospering without sex. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. Um, and then so what? 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 What uh, religion or, or, you know, what do you follow now? I would say lack of religion. Okay. In general. That's would you say more atheism or agnostic lack of religion? Because I, I similarly would say that I lack religion, but um, I would say I'm more agnostic than atheist. There's something, but I don't know what it is. I'm too small and stupid to know. <laughs> well, you, right. I think like a lot of, there are things that we don't understand Mm-hmm. And maybe we can't comprehend, um, but more like just science that we can't explain type of thing. Right, right. We just don't have the uh, methodology to prove things, but it doesn't mean that there aren't things there. Right. So yeah. and you- before this happened, I didn't even believe in ghosts. Oh, okay. Anything. Okay. So you're um, not, you know, at the time, because I mean, it, it sounds like... Sh- you know you did something to piss her off right so <laughs> instead of right. just living um 2020 you know, pissed her off yeah she's like, <laughs> her off. um i mean so i mean were you dabbling in any time were you like practicing you know trying to pick up witchcraft or doing any divination or i mean maybe you were unlike the shakers and you were just banging everybody i mean is there anything that that you Did think instigated this did you not that i'm, I'm not slut shaming at all i'm <laughs> i'm slut pro so you know i'm here for it but like you know yeah is there something that you think that you may have done that pushed her over her limit to start coming to visit you well i mean i feel like that would have been more appropriate for her to do in my 20s because now i'm kind of boring <laughs> That's true. You did say that in the beginning of this. You told you told me you I were have very a, boring. Yeah. <laughs> odd theory about this because you said it happened in 2020. Were you at the time at home like everyone else, locked down and by yourself and spending more time Absolutely. in an introspective state of being? I think a lot of us in 2020 spent a lot of time with ourselves, and in that quiet, there were a lot of things that came to be that we would not have noticed in our lives when our lives were busy pre-2020. Do you know what I'm saying? So maybe she was trying to tell you all along. She's been trying to get in contact with you all along, but your life was so much busier. And at that point, it was just a an opportune moment in time when your mind was a, more of a peaceful state to be receptive to that kind of thing. And just to throw it out there, some of my friends have tried to blame my cat um, what your cat <laughs> i got a covid kitten Aww. i adopted him it was um a few months into covid he happens to be a black cat and i thought it would be funny to name him alistair Polly. oh that's cute <laughs> i think it's adorable um but the problem is is he kind of has the same type of like bumbling idiot attitude as the real Alistair yeah. Crowley. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know. So we, it, could, it could we, be the real Alistair Crowley is what you're saying. He could be, you know. And we connected a lot because I think just be, from like being home 24-7. Right. But yeah. immediately people were like, that's not a normal cat. Like, that's like a familiar or something. <sighs> <laughs> What it really is a normal now. cat. I've had several cats in my life, and every single one of them have had it their own unique personalities. They're That's never true. normal. <laughs> That's, that is cats. <laughs> cats are their own unique, interesting characters. <laughs> but yes. I wouldn't put it past, past a cat to invite like a angry ancestor ghost in. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They would do that just uh, just for kicks. You know. <laughs> The one part of the dream that you're leaving out is she's like telling you, you can't leave. Also, give the cat extra food. 
<laughs> I can see that. That this is that I, that totally checks out. Um, no, let me uh, you know, let me, let me chime in for a second on a little bit of interesting trivia that was happening in 2020. And I don't know, Susie, maybe you're familiar with this happening um, because this was a personal experience to you. It sounds like you were trying to do your dil- dil- due diligence, Jesus, um, and try to make sense of it. Um, are you familiar with? In 2020, people were having these like insane, vivid dreams. Had had you heard that? No. Tell me yeah. more. Yep. So it was. I mean, it was just kind of you know something that started off as being like on social media where people are like, I, I just saw a post today, and it's like, oh, is, is anybody else having crazy dreams lately? No. Like this was happening to like everybody. Um, I had very strange vivid dreams and i'm oh, not yeah. a dream person like i don't normally remember i mean everybody dreams whether or not you remember them is the question i really don't remember mine most of the time and um i i was even remembering them and it was just kind of happening well then of course you know scientists are, are bored they're sick of looking at covid so i mean they start looking at these people's dreams and you know kind of wonder you know what's activating that is it just is it because we're all so stricken with grief and loneliness that it's our brain trying to get creative? Um, right. Is it, yeah. Is, I mean, is it because of the, you know, the negativity of just the state of the world right now? Um, you know, what is causing that? I don't believe there was ever an answer um, because sleep in and of itself and dreaming is already very mysterious. It is. Um, there's so much we, we don't know about it. Um, and even like dream interpretation is uh you know obviously it's a pseudoscience right it's kind of up to the person interpreting what is your Um, take on things like um astral projection and uh being able to enter other people's dreams and communicate with others while dreaming and those kind of things that when we're talking about the uh mysteries of dreams Mm -hmm. those are some of the things that come to mind yeah um i mean i know somebody who um says that they can do that uh I, and the only thing i can do is take their word for it I, you know they've never come to my dreams um you know i just have to assume <laughs> that what they're telling is true um I, I don't i don't specialize in dreams myself because like i said i'm not i don't dream a lot um so it's just not something that's ever really piqued my interest in that regard um but these mass vivid dreams that people were having during that time um i did find interesting it was it was a very collective experience Um, were they having similar dreams where people were dreaming of the same things i don't think so i don't i don't really know if they were or weren't um you know this was more of a because that would be wild that's some like stephen king the stand stuff right there like we're all dreaming of the same black lady in a cornfield in Nebraska. There, there might be more to it than just a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think I would have. I, I think I would have remembered. Um, but it was just like I said, it's one of those things. It was just kind of happening and caught my eye for a moment. Um, but it, it sticks out to me now because you know, Susie, your dreams were happening. Well, guess what? In that prime time, right in 2020, when this was going on. Um, now that you know that information, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to take it and try to apply it to your situation somehow um i can't say that i know i can tell you you know that people you know I, that people are having dreams like you were because yours seem very specific you know um it has a greater outside influence um but it might be helpful in trying to kind of you know understand what may have happened there yeah one thing that i did find helped at least me mentally was I saw a woman on TikTok who had also had like a mean ancestor ghost situation. I was like, oh, so it's not just me that has mean ones. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) I've been told um, by a friend of mine who who is a bit of a medium that I have three spirits that follow me and my children around at all times and that one of them is a rather dark, oppressive one. And um We've even talked about like the means to like get rid of these things, yeah. but she said that it's an ancestral spirit, and it's while it's mean and oppressive, it has its purpose. So to get rid of it would not be beneficial to me. It keeps me in balance and keeps me in check. 
<laughs> so it was it was an interesting conversation to have. But yeah, when we're talking about uh, mean ancestral relatives, apparently, according to my friend who has some gifts, uh, I have one of those that follows me around everywhere. <laughs> you can relate. Yeah. So, you know, Susie, you were saying you were kind of started started to say that this started to manifest in not just dream world, but real world. What did you do after that to handle that situation? So I'm not sure if it was that same night or if it was, you know, a few days later, but I was getting into bed and I look up at that same TV that had fallen and I saw my reflection in it. And that kind of stuck out to me. And I kind of, I realized then like a TV that's turned off is just a black mirror. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And they say, like, don't have mirrors facing your bed. Yep. This TV was directly in front of my bed. Mm -hmm. Um, I just put a scarf over the TV. That's I I knew a woman that would cover her TV whenever it wasn't on. I've no I think I I feel like I've known a couple of people in my life that have done that, Um, even whether or not it's in the room or not. But yes, in the bedroom specifically, you're not supposed to have mirrors. You just yep. gave me the creep saying that because I am currently sitting in my bedroom directly across from my shut off TV screen <laughs> looking at my reflection, <laughs> talking bad juju about my creepy ancestors who could come through that screen. <laughs> yeah, I don't it. No, the it, the uh, dreams actually stopped after that, but I okay. still don't know for sure. Like, Maybe that what? was her slamming a door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm done with you. I'm, I can't convince you to live your life the way I want you to. I'm just going to throw this TV at you. I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to move on to somebody else. When did when did they stop? When was this? So it had gone on for probably a year and a half. So it wasn't that long ago that mm-hmm. this stopped. Gotcha. Wow. That's a long time to be dealing with that. Oh yeah, and, yeah. To have because when you have a dream like that, you're not going back to sleep. No, no. no bedtime becomes the worst time. You're like, oh god, here we go yeah. again. I'm gonna yep. go to bed, and the transmission's gonna go missing out of my car. And yep. <laughs> I used to have this recurring dream, which I haven't had in years, thank goodness. Um, but as a child, I used to have a recurring dream of, and I to this day I won't sleep with my head below an open window. But there was a a bald man in the window looking in like peering in with his hands to each side like Ew. trying to block the glare and i was sleeping directly beneath the window and i reach up in the dream to close the window to like pull the shade down and i touch his face because <laughs> like the window is wide Gross. open and i wake up because that's horrifying <laughs> yeah. but yeah i used to have a recurring dream of like this bald man trying to peer in a window and then i reach up and touch his face well, it doesn't make for very peaceful sleep. Uh, <laughs> now I sleep next to a bald man. <laughs> a little more normal now. <laughs> you, you, you dreamt it. You manifested it. Yes, real life. yes. Now he doesn't appear um, in the window anymore. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to now. It, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um. So, okay. So, your mom. Let's talk about, so your um mom's mom your great your grandma not great grandma i'm i'm going to assume that she's not still alive is that right or is she still alive correct she passed about okay. 20 years ago oh okay um and then so your mom when you tell her of these dreams um i mean what's obviously she's like oh that's your you know great grandmother but really like what's her take on it does she have has she, did she ever disclose she's had this kind of contact with her grandmother before no my mother does not believe in anything either and gotcha. i was actually surprised she was even like indulging my questions um, and you know at there was a point where I was like digging through old family stuff and pictures and I found out that my grandmother was pregnant when she got married to my grandfather. Okay. Okay. And I called my mother and asked her about it and she got upset with me about that one. (laughs) That's Um, a family scandal. Shh. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> but all of these old pictures, my grandmother is with my grandfather's family and not hers. Yeah, I gotcha. Right, because obviously something, some fallout. I mean, so, I mean, now at this point, do you know if how how long it had been since, you know, your grandmother and great-grandmother were even in contact with each other? Uh, I know that my great-grandmother passed away in the 60s, but okay. my mother... When I asked her, she said that she only met her a few times and they lived only a few miles away. Right. Right. So pretty much it, it sounds like from the time that your your grandmother was able to leave, she did. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's so interesting. Um I would I would want to know more. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> because it just seems so weird, you know. Yeah, it's very compelling. Like it is. It is. This, it's it's like receiving a, a letter from some long lost relative and then not having any further contact with them, having any right. other way of like knowing anything more. Do hmm. you buy the story that she's visiting you because of the religious aspect? I mean, is that what you're subscribing to now? I mean, she's real mad. There's, okay. I don't know if it's necessarily religion. But, I mean, if she was upset with my grandmother for getting pregnant and mm -hmm. then getting married, like, I have a kid and I never got married. Maybe right. that's it. She's punishing you for it. You know, it could be. Uh, you know, because I just wondered if on the flip side of that, do you think it's potentially she is carrying a lot of guilt? She should be. I mean, she should I hope be. she is. Right. <laughs> She, and I agree with that. Yeah, she should be. Um, but you're the one that encounters her, you know. Yeah. Um, if if you feel like this is more anger because she's directing it at you, or or maybe it's a, a guilty thing. Not that she she's could be angry still, right? Um, but maybe she's just displacing that because she probably. Um, I mean, it sounds like she wasn't a very emotionally inept individual, right? So she probably translated most feelings into anger. It does feel like it's a very fear-based anger. Okay. Like she's afraid for you. Yeah. Interesting. And I kind of even like started questioning myself. I'm like, well, she's dead. She might know more than me. Should I be afraid? But then, you know, if she's coming back angry, I mean, like I said before, she's just not having a good time in the afterlife. Right. So maybe she didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's what she's trying to tell you. She's like, hey, <laughs> hell sucks. <laughs> I, I have some curiosities about why it's your old car and not your current car. What kind of car was this old car? It was a emerald green Saturn Ion. And I loved that car. Oh, yeah. oh maybe it's just because you loved that car so much. And, hmm. and she she took a piece out of it. And, uh, you know, she. You don't um, love your current car as much as you loved your old car? I'm lukewarm about <laughs> the current one. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? You're just like, oh, my car is dead. Now maybe I'll like this one. It's okay. It drives. <laughs> it gets all me of it has this heavy connotation of past, you know, like it's past car, it's past family ancestral home old it's, hometown yeah yeah old hometown um so i don't know if it's just at that time in your life you were just reflecting on your past heavily um and that just kind of like i said opened up a doorway there for grandma to great grandma comes sneaking in that's when <laughs> everyone was getting into like the ancestry and 23 and me stuff too oh, during yeah, that that's true. period did you did you partake subliminal in subliminal messaging? Yeah. So I did it earlier. Okay. Um, but because I'm from like a well documented white New England family, like there wasn't much sure. to it. like I already knew. <laughs> right. There's no surprises. I have not been brave enough to do that. <laughs> that twenty three in me. Really? Because oh, if we get into the sorted, that's a whole episode in it, in and of itself. The <laughs> sorted details of where Zool's past is um, 
yeah <laughs> i come from a long line of weird orphans so <laughs> it would be interesting to find out um i probably have all sorts of, and then the family i do know um, my maternal grandmother's family my maternal grandma had 16 children so oh, i'm wow. one of like 150 cousins and so on and so mm -hmm. forth so it, there's a lot of us and i i imagine there's even more of us that we don't know about mm -hmm. um Let's put it this way. I was born in Nebraska and I chose to move to Ohio to find somebody to marry and date so I could. <laughs> my grandma populated half the state of Nebraska. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like Ohio. Right? That's, that's, that's big misconception. It was like, oh, Ohio is terrible. No, it's great. It's just you have to know what you're looking for. Um, and Zool's looking for love and she found it. So, <laughs> I found it in Nebraska, but it brought oh. me to Ohio. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, you know, with all this being, I can't, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I can't give you any answers. I'm sure you know that. Um, you know, I can only try to maybe give you some tools. Uh, like I said, I would, if I were you, I would definitely take this information. I would look into the 2020 dreams um, because you know, even though, again, they might not be able to give you answers. Um, and, and it doesn't sound like it's a problem so much now. So, like, you don't really need to solve it. But, you know, you can't guarantee she's never going to come back. Do you worry about that at all? I do worry about it coming back. And I also feel like I never solved the mystery. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of loose ends to this story. Um, like, who are these guys? <laughs> sure yeah absolutely when you know you... who they reminded me of who um, was that? the farmhands in the wizard of oz oh my Maybe. god it's so crazy that you said that because the whole time you were telling your story i, I was getting wizard of oz vibes yep. and i was gonna say something about it but i was like oh, that's yeah kind of right, right away yeah I agree with that. um interesting that we all had the same thoughts I, yeah I have... wizard of oz vibes i think it was just the farm and then these two guys and then not being able to get back home yeah that, that's like you know that's the, the whole theme of the wizard of oz is not being able to get back home and then it being some kind of weird dream right right mm. i never made that connection yeah i mean it was a wizard of oz moment <laughs> the wizard that. is trying to tell you something <laughs> yeah. you ever, i mean so when you're having these dreams you're not i'm assuming when you're having them they're very much you're not in control of the situation because i'm assuming in your dream you've never deviated from the path is that is that a good assumption or or has it kind of gone has it changed has a little bit? tried to it has not changed one bit someone did suggest to me that i look into lucid dreaming right yeah um once i figured out i could cover up my tv to make it stop i haven't i kind of took a break from it yeah <laughs> um yeah. but i am curious and one of the things that i kind of realized about dreams is i've never had a dream with a cell phone in it okay because i was sure. like sitting around like contemplating these dreams right and i'm thinking like if i just had a cell phone to call for help i'd be fine in this dream and then i kind of realized like i've never had a dream about a cell phone right and i asked a couple of my friends and everyone said yeah no i never have either yeah um i i don't think i have either um dreams you know there's like people that say that you only dream in black and white um my sister okay my sister's deaf all right and when she has dreams she can hear things in her dreams oh and blind people can see things in their dreams and now granted my sister with her deafness um she is not completely deaf she's what they call hard of hearing uh when people think about hard of hearing though they think of like old people you know what it's not like that um she can hear what you're saying she can't necessarily comprehend because her hearing was so bad and she didn't get hearing aids until at a later date so um you know sit auditory structure processing like yeah yeah she just it just never you know never clicked in her brain um so she i mean she can hear but you know with deafness there's also different levels of its tone is what it is um you can't hear certain tones and so there's just some things that don't exist to her yeah um, missing pieces of conversation 
right but in her dreams you know she is able to hear and interact just as you and you and i are to do so with each other you know she doesn't have to use sign language yeah and it's very interesting what um, a cool experience yeah how that works out and blind people and we're talking completely blind people that don't see anything because there's also different varying degrees of blindness um people that have never seen anything ever don't even have eyeballs um they see things in their dreams and then they can't really describe what they've seen but they know they've seen things you know they're not just dreaming in complete total darkness um it's pictures in your mind and even if you it's probably wrong right they're describing things it's probably not totally accurate or it's based entirely off of how they feel and touch the world you know um but still probably not accurate i don't know what colors look like to a blind person and how do you explain colors being a blind person in your dream if you can dream in color because again they say you can only dream in black and white yeah it's weird. interesting it's weird yeah. perception in itself is a very um mysterious thing to me like what i perceive as blue how do i know no that you're perceiving the exact same thing how do i know that you just haven't been taught that what you're perceiving is called blue but it looks entirely different from what i see as blue do you know what i'm saying like it's we don't know for sure when it comes to perception how anybody really perceives a thing yeah um, because that would that's such a unique experience to the the perceiver yeah you can't crawl into somebody else's brain um and, and see it and so that's why that's why dreams become such a weird muddy topic yeah um because it's hard to really explain to another person um you know in great detail about what you're perceiving so um you know it is uh, overall a, an interesting topic um you know like i said one that i'm just not really i haven't really had too much of a reason to look into um but i'm gonna jump into the 2020 dreams now because of it's Susie's fault um, <laughs> see what you've done now Susie. <laughs> i love making people go down new rabbit holes <laughs> uh, gosh, so know. speaking of dreams Susie, have you ever had any other type of vivid dreams um like that or like recurring dreams or uh, any kind of other bizarre dreamlike experiences besides that i had I guess I'd call it like a almost like a deja vu type of thing with the Oklahoma City bombings. Oh, um, okay. I was little. I think that happened in like ninety four, so I would have been like ten, maybe. Okay. I might be wrong about what year that happened, but I remember having a dream about seeing my mom watching it on TV, and then when it actually happened, I was like, "I've had a dream about this." Oh wow! Interesting. That is and interesting. Do you remember the dream itself or you just remember that you remember you had a dream about it? I remember the feeling of remembering the dream. Gotcha. Okay. That's honest. I'm just look, trying to look up when this happened. 95 is when it was. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah I was close enough. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Did any, I mean, obviously you were, like you said, you were maybe 10, uh, maybe 11, you know, at that age. Um, were people did anybody react to the fact that you you said that you had a dream about or did you tell anybody i did not tell anybody okay interesting yeah. why didn't you tell anybody uh, my mom would have thought i was crazy for <laughs> sure <laughs> we heard my story in the beginning of this you're not wrong <laughs> um <laughs> so good on you for being um i guess smarter than i was at 12. yeah, uh, yeah. I, I full on let my parents know I was crazy and, you know, paid the price for it. So <laughs> yeah. um, it's definitely uh, it's, as a wise wasn't, decision. Wasn't savvy enough to, to think ahead as a young person and be like, you know, if I do this, they're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> right. right. Um, is that the only other instance of anything that maybe potentially could be related to this that you can think of? that's it i mean aside from that dream wise i've had like the teeth falling out dreams sure. i've had i when my son was a baby i had reoccurring nightmares that the brakes in my car went out okay Yikes. But, but that seems reasonable for an expectant mom you know right <laughs> yep but yeah those are the only the only two things other than that i've had just the normal weird dreams 
Sure. You have car trouble dreams. I do. You yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that. Have you ever had the one where you're like going off of a bridge into water or something? I've had that one. No, not me. I have the one where you're trying to hit somebody and you can't. I never oh, have yeah. a car in my dreams. I'm always on foot and I'm always running from something and... Like I, I never have a car in my dreams, and if I do, I'm in the back seat of it, and it's driving itself, or nobody's driving it. I've had those recurring nightmares. I used to have them a lot when I was younger, being in the back seat of a car that was going down the road, and there's no one driving it. But Ugh, I, never I hate have, when that I'm happens. Lucky enough to be right behind the wheel and steering my own dream. <laughs> Susie, have you had a lot of car troubles in your general life? I mean, like, not just like normal car troubles, but like a lot of car troubles. I feel like my car is a source of anxiety for me, yeah. whether it's like warranted or not. Right. I, I, I completely I understand bad. what you mean. Yeah, that's how I feel about every vehicle. Even my car now, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's oh, it's brand new almost. And I still feel like oh, something's going to happen. Like my brakes are going to go out for no reason. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and oh, that thought always occurs to me. What if my brakes just don't work right? But, but the, I've had my brakes go out on me in two different cars. So maybe yeah, that's why, um, you know, <laughs> it happens and you just never my, trust uh, it ever again. <laughs> my 18-year-old daughter just recently took her driver's license exam. And mm -hmm. during the exam, her brakes went out. She passed oh her exam God. with a blown brake line. Wow. <laughs> Good for her. And then... Which was 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 great, but then yesterday she uh, wrecked her car on the way to school. Um, it's she's okay, and the car was drivable to make it home, but it was just the weather was too bad. And yeah. uh, out here in Northeast Ohio, we get uh, lake effect snow up here. Yeah, and it's it's uh, you want to talk about crazy mysteries? There'll be no snow on the ground, and then there's three feet of snow on the ground. <laughs> Like, and like blink and like your fashion. eyes and there's there's a whole wall of snow that just came from nowhere um but yeah she she so she's i i've been having anxiety dreams because i have a brand new fresh 18 year old driver who oh, yeah. is inexperienced and i have to let go and let them go out on the road and and take those chances and then sure enough i'm not excited <laughs> about that myself um susie have you ever had any other strange paranormal ufological cryptozoological any other weird experiences in your life that you can recall despite my best efforts i have not <laughs> well not yet um <laughs> i'm working on it you're trying you're trying i think i want it too bad yeah i think that you know I'm, things, yes i think that happens to some people i do they, they tend to happen when you least expect them right um, you know yeah. like i i you, Susie, I was, uh, I'm an, originally a registered nurse, um, so I'm very scientific minded and I, I can be very skeptical. I'm always looking for the logical explanation behind any kind of mystery. Um, but there was an occasion once where we were going down the freeway and my daughter was there too, and we came across a uh, motorcycle accident. And it had just happened, and the ambulance was there. The woman was lying on the ground, and she clearly had a head injury. There was, you know, brains on the road. Um, she's still moving. She's trying to reach up and touch her head, and the paramedics are trying to work with her on the ground. And I see the exact same woman standing at the back of the ambulance, looking and holding her head. And she looks at me as we're driving by and says, I'm lying on a blue lighter. Can you tell them? And I, I can't tell you... She didn't like say it to me, but I heard it. It's it's hard to explain. I don't have these experiences. This never has never ever happened to me. I thought it was the woman's twin sister. And I was looked that at my real it, it it was yeah, it was not well, I mean, I guess it was real. My daughter saw her too. It was the woman. She had passed away. I called my friend when I got home, the one with the uh gifts. And I was like, I just had the weirdest experience. I saw what looked like a set of twins. One of them had been in a, clearly in a motorcycle accident. And the other one, who was dressed exactly like her and standing there, said something to me. And she goes, those weren't twins. 
<laughs> that was that lady. And I was like, she was solid. She was a solid human being. My daughter saw her. <laughs> but apparently we had seen somebody leaving their earthly body. Yeah. It, well, was, and- it was a weird experience. But like she said, I asked my friend, I go, am I going to see dead people all the time now? And she goes, no, you just happened to be open at that moment in time. You were relaxed. You weren't thinking about anything. You weren't stressed out. And you happened to be open. And she saw, she happened to catch you open and wanted to communicate something with you. Wow. Which was that she was lying on a blue lighter. <laughs> and now I half wish I had pulled over and, and walked over to the scene and asked them, could you check her pocket for a blue lighter? <laughs> right. Roll her over for a second. You won't mind. Oh, gosh, that's terrible. Um, well, obviously she wanted, you know, wanted to be rolled over. Um, I didn't expect this episode to get a twofer. So <laughs> congratulations, so, you guys. You, you got uh, a couple of a couple of tales there. Um, but, um, you know, Susie, I, I hope that, you know, are, are you receptive to people reaching out to you um, if they might have any inkling or any type of lead on the situation? Or are you content with where your your stories in, ended up now? I would love any potential theories or leads. I still, it still bothers me that I don't have answers. Gotcha. So you, would you be open to like speaking to people um, that are dream interpreters or maybe other mediums, things like that? As long as they don't try to convince me she's not mad because she is. <laughs> she's <laughs> very mad, yeah. <laughs> Knowing that she's mad, would you be willing to try something like a Ouija board or anything like that to be in communication with her? Or would that be too intimidating because she's angry? Um, if I had the right support system with me, I would. Okay. Even if that potentially opening that door back up. Yeah, yeah I that mean, would be my concern. I, I feel like we have to just battle it out someday, like family therapy, but it's yeah. hard. <laughs> you know family therapy <laughs> yeah oh my god you should hire the dad from casper because he's a ghost therapist <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> um have him come along right he'll help and you guys can sit down and just chat it out right i mean just you just gotta tell her like look i don't care what you think about me like your opinion doesn't matter you don't pay my bills right i, I do feel you. like someday i need to like Get into lucid dreaming, take the scarf mm-hmm. off of the TV, go to bed, and we just hash things out. This is like a like fight or what, but a new Freddy Krueger movie. Like it works. I love that. <laughs> um, no, I agree. I think I Revenge think that of can- the Great Granddaughter. <laughs> I think that you should look into lucid dreaming. I think you should prepare yourself for because i i mean it sounds like you feel strongly that this is going to be something you're going to encounter later in your life and i think that it it probably will be um so i mean i think that you should like train right (laughs) you should (laughs) you should be good at it like get the upper hand so that way the very first time she does come back you're not like oh god now i have to learn all this stuff and deal with the dreams um you should look into it i mean that's you know completely up to you and your time and and how you want to handle it but Um, I would think that would be the next logical step at the very least, you know, to be able to ask her, you know, why are you here and can you go away? You know, yeah, mind your business, (laughs) you know, I mean, um, go towards the light, grandma, right? Please go towards the light. We're, we're done here with you you know um but i i would be really interested um if she if it ever um starts happening again will you tell me sure i because I, I i would love to know um you know where this ends up yeah if anybody um so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put your contact out there publicly and just for all to see um if anybody thinks that they can help Susie and, and trying to maybe further along some understanding here um get a hold of me directly and I will put you guys in a contact. I just don't want crazy people reaching out to you. <laughs> and trying I appreciate to, it. Yeah, trying to, you know. You've already got crazy people reaching out to you. And you're right. doing such. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't need any more. Um, 
and I've seen your Facebook. I know. No, I'm just, <laughs> I know the struggle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I will definitely, I'll let you know if anybody reaches out to me and I feel they're trustworthy and I'll, I'll connect you guys together, um, you know, going from there. And then, you know, in the meantime, if anything new comes along, um, just, you know, let me know. Um, so well, did you have any closing um, questions or remarks to Susie? No, um, I just think it's an incredibly fascinating story. And, and uh, I think it was interesting that you brought up the 2020 dreaming uh, that was going on that people were reporting. I, I, this was an interesting little rabbit hole to go down. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, I just I can't thank you enough for coming on and, and sharing with us. You're very welcome. It was nice to get that off my chest. Good. I'm glad. You know, that's definitely... You know, we, we want to be able to help people here and, you know, have you feel like you're you're in a spot where nobody's going to be like, wow, this girl's nuts. Um, it's not like that here. You know, there's probably going to be listeners that have a very similar experience to yours. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard it all. So <laughs> there's just so many um, things out there that we can't explain um, that don't necessarily mean people are crazy if they experience them. It just means that you're experiencing something unique to your story. And that's something that is part of your personal, your own personal mystery of your life. Exactly. Not understanding doesn't make you crazy. It just means we don't understand. It's um, part of the and journey. That, and that's it, right? That's, you know, that's all there is to it. So um, but, you know, with that being said, um, we'll go ahead and we will wrap up the episode right here. Susie, thank you again for coming on. Zul, thank you for co-hosting tonight. Absolutely. And, thank you for yeah, having me. Of course. And we will see you guys back here on the next episode.